Good morning, everyone. My name is Christopher Chirk. I am a Grade Five student studying at St. Stephen's College Preparatory School. Today, I'm going to present the alternative ending to "The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe" by C.S. Lewis. One day, the four royal siblings were told to the appearance appearance of the white stag, and they decided to hunt for it so that they could each be granted their own wish. Whilst chasing the white stag, they saw and went past a lamp post, which was which felt familiar to them, but they could not remember the details. They made their way past the lamp post and through the thick trees, and ended up standing in thick snow. The siblings' appearances slowly changed back to that of children, and the siblings started to remember about the professor's house, the war, their parents, and the early days of Narnia. Just then, Aslan appeared, and they thought he was going to greet them. But suddenly, Aslan launched himself at them. The four siblings scampered for their lives just as Aslan attacked. As the siblings thought that there was no way out, the White Witch, but now wearing all black, suddenly appeared in front of them and used a magic spell to summon a stone shield to protect them. Then she used her magic wand to turn the frustrated Aslan into stone, and as she was about to teleport the four siblings with her, Aslan broke free from the spell that had him frozen and pounced on them, but missed as they disappeared. And the witch's house, she told the four children that Aslan was the ruler of deserts, and he wanted to make everyone to be scorched to death. She then recounted that she has been fighting Aslan for many of years, and heard a rumor that four siblings will come to this world and defeat Aslan forever. The children were shocked by the witch's revelations. Edmund still could not believe that the Black Witch was actually trying to help, but he could not think of other reasons as to why Aslan would attack them. The Black Witch then explained that Aslan has. Always been bad, and who just wanted power and vengeance. Lucy then suggested, "We might be at another Narnia. In this different version of Narnia, Aslan is the bad guy, and the witch is on the good side. Although this didn't make too much sense, but they still stuck to this idea because they couldn't think of another explanation. The witch told them to get prepared to grab all the weapons they could find." The witch said, "This is the first battle, and they'll fight against Aslan and his army. The battle would commence at noon tomorrow, so they needed a good sleep. But the children were shocked that they were unable to sleep, so they stayed wide awake until the morning. The battle fought the next day was as fearsome and dangerous as the last battle in the old Narnia all those years ago." Aslan was attacking everyone from the witch's enemies, left and right, with his sharp claws, and there was no way out. Suddenly, Peter charged at the lion, and then swung his sword at him. And Susan shot her arrows, and they broke through Aslan's sharp claws and forced him to fall off a cliff. As the other animals witnessed Aslan's death, they all surrendered and begged for mercy. After the death of evil Aslan. The witch crowned the four siblings as kings and queens, but they quickly refused because they wanted to go back to the real world. As they rode their camels, they found a broken head of the old lamppost and knew that they were close to home and freedom. Then suddenly, a black goat appeared in front of them. That must be the black goat everyone was searching for in this version of Narnia, Edmund said. But they didn't really care about it because all they wanted was to get back home. As they walked, the dirt walls between them started turning into wooden walls. The vines started turning into fur coats, and they found themselves climbing out of the wardrobe in the professor's house. Thank you for listening.